Welcome to the WAN Show, where we're going to be coming at you guys with all of the hot takes. Just kidding. No hot takes today because all of our news is extremely straightforward, starting with, of course, that Elon Gate continues. That's right. Twitter is threatening to enforce, or rather, <clears throat> could enforce, consummation of the agreement for their $44 billion sale. Meanwhile, Elon has formed, or is forming, a hardcore litigation department, or as I call it, the hold. In other news, <laughs> Framework, who I have invested in, full disclosure, Framework has joined Intel's 12th generation with a new motherboard and some other really exciting news that is going to be uh, great news for right to repair advocates. What else we got today? Uh, this topic that made me frown until I read it, and then it made me give have a slight chuckle, which is Microsoft patent system to play discs on consoles with no disk drive. Try to figure it out before we get to the topic. I figured it out. It's USB. Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> how well, we did can, anyone get that? <laughs> we can talk about how stupid that is later, though. And YouTube is highlighting the most replayed parts of videos. Hooray. That's news. Amazing. All right. Well, in other news. I have news, things to say about it. Here's an intro. Okay. I always die. <laughs> the show is brought to you by Origin PC, Zoho Desk, and Secret Lab. Let's jump right into our first topic, which is not going to be the stupid Elon thing. Instead, it's going to be talking about Framework Let's Laptop. Go. There are two interesting things to announce from this week. This was originally posted on the forum by Michael Mouton. That is the LTT forum. And the original article here is from Ars Technica. Let's see if I can remember how all this stuff works. There it is. That's right. You can buy the Framework Laptops motherboard for $3.99 and make your own mini PC. This system could also, I mean, I guess it's not really a system. It's just like, you it know, is. the ability to just use it outside of the case, which should have just existed, but I guess didn't. Um, this could also help you repurpose an old framework board after upgrading. If, nice. say, for example, you wanted to upgrade to da -da 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 the new 12th gen motherboard. That's right. Pre-orders have opened up for framework laptops equipped with Intel's latest chips in both fully assembled and DIY SKUs. Likewise, the company now also sells standalone logic boards starting at $399, as we showed you just now. That's a Core i5-1135G7. 12th gen boards will be coming later. For now, they need them for completed systems. Framework also released schematics on GitHub to help people design their own 3D printable cases if they want to repurpose an old board for VESA-mounted AIO desktop use. This is awesome. This is the kind of reduce and reuse that help us avoid the third R word, recycle. Okay, we don't want to recycle things that we can still if be reducing or reusing. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons that I got so angry when Apple first released their 5K iMac because previous iMacs actually had the ability to continue to breathe oh, new life yeah. into them as a monitor yeah. once you were done with the computer inside. Generally a really good monitor too. Now, there were justifiable reasons for Apple to not take that approach with the iMac 5K. It actually required a very special DisplayPort implementation to achieve that resolution at 60 hertz at that time on DP 1.0. I believe it was DP 1.2. They had to like bond together two connections, something, something, et cetera. It doesn't matter. The point is that nowadays they could absolutely re-enable it, but now that they've normalized not being able to continue to use your AIO computer as a monitor once the computer's not useful, they've just been like, eh, forget it. And to be Let's clear, more monitors. Let's go. anyone else who doesn't do that sucks too. But the reason that I harp on Apple as much as I do is that as Apple goes, the rest of the industry tends to follow because you can't possibly not be feature for feature competitive with Apple. Otherwise, you're going to look like a flippin' idiot. So Apple's got all this extra pressure on them to set a good example. And they take all that pressure, crumple it up into a ball and throw it in a fire because they just don't 
care. It's really funny. Have you seen any of the new uh, accounts coming out of sort of the, the 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 rift between Joni Ive and Tim Cook and like how he ended up splitting? Because get this, Joni Ive felt like Apple was being far too utilitarian focused in its designs. Whoa! Good riddance, Joni. Whoa! Because <laughs> that ain't the problem. That's great. Do you know where he's going? Uh, no, he left ages ago. That oh. this was this was way back. This was way back. He he runs his own like design firm. If you, I guess, want to, mm, I was yeah, gonna Google it, stuff. but I don't care. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yep, sounds good. In other news, uh, speaking of schematics, Framework also published semi-complete technical schematics for the laptop boards as well. It's not hugely detailed, but the sentiment around it so far is that it represents a good start considering that no other manufacturers have any publicly available schematics to speak of. I consider this at least a step in the right direction for them. But as always, my stance on my framework investment is going to be that if they do not continue to live up to their promises to you and to me, my intention is to dump their stock publicly, messily. They knew this going into it. And that was kind of like half the value for them, I think. Oh, yeah. Is that I've essentially got a gun to their head <laughs> being like, no, for real, though. I might just be a shareholder and a relatively minor one at that. But if you guys <laughs> this up, it's going to be really bad. You're like, theoretically, really bad. You're theoretically the canary, right, in this scenario, which is, which is cool. It's kind of nice that they have that. So this is, wow, this is actually really helpful. You are there, don't be evil. I, I like it. Except if the don't be evil goes away this time, it won't be like quiet. It'll be loud. And I've got you Good. guys to hold me accountable. Yeah. This is actually great. So they've Yeah. They've got part numbers. They've got what voltages these are supposed to be running at. Which it's yeah, like okay, yeah, it's not perfect, but even just having like pinouts for things, a lot of this can be reverse engineered, as we've seen. But what if, what if, what if? You didn't have to. Thank you. Yeah. What if we just didn't have to? What if you just went, hey, you guys are going to figure this out anyway. Why don't we all just work together? I love it. I'm extremely happy. I wish they had Ryzen 2 Zorg 666. I truly do. I I have to I have to believe that they are working on that. I think the reality of it is that AMD just has not had chips to fulfill orders with over the last 18 months yeah. since their laptop SKUs have actually been competitive. Um, and if AMD wild, right? <laughs> if AMD has to allocate silicon to something these days, I think we can all agree it needs to be Steam Decks. <laughs> <laughs> I still get an email yet? No. When did you order? Uh I ordered on WAN Show. I don't know if it was announced that day. Um, but if it was announced that day, I ordered that day. But within the first week. Yeah. So anyone who waited for any of our, you know, future coverage, you know, showing off the hardware or anything like that. Oh, oh. Here's a here's a potentially interesting take on it. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not yet. I don't yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna get it at this point. Really? Yeah. Why? Because a big part of the reason why I wanted to get it in the first place was the same kind of reason why I was really into like buying those early uh, VR devices. It's because it was really cool to be on like... That cutting edge. Yeah. Yeah, you've already missed a ton of software changes on it. Yeah. Like it's a different device than it yeah. was the first day I got it. I'm going to get it like a year after it launched. <laughs> not only that, but it's not like the handheld gaming PC market is yeah. standing still. Oh, uh, is uh, this embargoed? Uh, Hold on a second. Let me just find out if anyone's talking about this. Uh, one second, please. They're still working on day one applicants? Yeah. Wow. Really? Apparently. <gasps> Why? Well, this is someone in Flowplane chat that said that. I, I don't know. But, I mean, I believe them. Considering they still haven't got to mine, like, they can't be that. Far. Okay. This is apparently out there, so I guess it's fine. Uh, but... I just got my hands on this. It's a Gundam edition of the One X Player Mini. And like, I know I- Wow, that looks sick. I know I have trumpeted the Whoa, I and Neo that looks cool. a lot, 
But I gotta say, as far as colorways and designs go, this is so much better than what anyone else has done so far that it just blows that my mind. That actually insane. Like, like the, the, the buttons look amazing. The, the semi-metallic look yeah. that they got on these buttons looks flippin' unbelievable. Wow. And Aya has actually just announced an OLED version of their, I forget what it is, it's the Aya Neo 2, I think they're calling it, but it's OLED, uh, it's going to be RDNA, RDNA, what RDNA are we on now? RDNA 3 or whatever, so it's gonna be next-gen, next-gen graphics, uh, it's gonna have, what is it, Ryzen, Ryzen 6000? Okay, hold on, Aya Neo 2, on the Ryzen 6800U. Ryzen 6800U specs. I think it's our DNA 3. I'm having trouble keeping track of everything these days. There's so many, so many numbers and so many letters. Just show it to me. Uh, Radeon 680M. Yeah, I believe so. So it's apparently OLED, which is going to be the first of its kind. That's one of my big complaints about the Steam Deck is that the screen is fine. It's not great. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's a it's a value device screen, but a well done one, you know? And so by the time you could get a response to your application to buy a Steam Deck, <laughs> there could be devices that just make way more sense. Like, for sure. And the and the whole the whole early adopterness is gonna be gone, which mm -hmm. is like something that I, I like a lot. I just I don't know. I'm just not, I, I I suspect by the time they email me and they're like, hey, you can spend hundreds of dollars on this. I'm just not actually going to be that interested anymore. Well, knowing what like might knowing happen, myself. having your place in line, though, I mean, if by that time Valve is upgrading the Steam Deck and it's going to have like a, a next generation SOC, that might be the only way to be first in line for yeah, it. The, the timing might be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The timing we'll might be. Like, I, I haven't, I don't even know if you can. I haven't like canceled my spot in line. I just don't 100% know of when they finally do offer it, if I'll still even be interested. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Aya has apparently not released pricing for the Aya Neo 2, and I don't have any insider information, but it would surprise me a lot if the pricing was the same as what they have done previously, rather than being more competitive with the Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Discussion question. What is the biggest omission in framework schematic drop? Yeah, I don't think either I think Luke or I is... We'd have to dive through the whole thing. Yeah, for, uh, prepared for a, that kind a of... A lot more deeply than Wancho allows. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the complete <laughs> bus throw, Jonathan Horst, <laughs> by, by putting that question in there for us. <laughs> uh, what sort of public policy related to schematics would be fair to manufacturers and repair shops alike? Okay, that's a better discussion question. Luke, how a can a manufacturer one. protect their IP while also allowing for third-party repair shops to repair these devices because first-party repair is not always a good answer depending on where you are or what your financial means are it, it just might not make sense and then there's that whole reduce reuse thing like even if it doesn't make a ton of financial sense shouldn't we enable people to keep these items out of the the shredder it's a it's a it's kind of actually a pretty tough question because it, you could just say like oh like patent it whatever but that doesn't necessarily work all that great especially once you get to out of country manufacturers oh yeah no it's and then difficult and then you you could also say like oh well you should just like stick to your ethics and your morals and whatever and then like be the company that people want to buy from and like yeah sure that's all great but then uh the world population has shown that if something's cheaper, they don't much care about anything else. Um, so it's it's kind of tough. I don't know. Making policy for that is going to be kind of tough. I think a... Yeah, I don't know. Find, finding something that is going to work universally, so a situation where it's policy, um, does genuinely sound pretty hard um, in, in regards to forcing people to make things like schematics available. Um, and I don't know if the right to repair movement actually goes that far. I mean, the thing for me is that I feel like anything that can be found Will by be. simply analyzing it yeah. might as well just be provided. For so sure. From, how do you make policy around that? 
Because that, that's the that's the thing that I'm currently getting hooked up on is they specifically said policy. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, for, for my knee-jerk reaction is that I I might not want to... Oh, see, that's tough. I was about to say, I might not want to, to force manufacturers to reveal the model of chip that they're using. But then... Yeah, but then they, they have to reveal the trace layout, for example, because that's something that we could just x-ray and, right. and find if we were willing to put the time into it. And, right. And all you're really doing is increasing the barrier between like large repair shops and like small mom and pop repair shops. But then if we don't reveal, if we don't tell them they have to reveal which chips are being used, well, then all of a sudden, well, if there's a failed component on the board, so, okay, what, you've got a blown trace. Now you can painstakingly put a hair sized wire in to repair that. But if you can't replace the component that caused the trace to blow in the first place, then it's not it's not really useful. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could okay, here's something. You could have like a uh, like a stair step style uh, level of of uh, responsibility. So right at release, you know, within some period of time, let's say a year, you can say, look, everything is trade secret, especially at the rate that technology moves. Within a year, you could say, okay, everything is trade secret. Within two years or 36 months, there's an additional responsibility to release it. And then the second that the product is EOL, the second you are no longer producing, let's say brand new ones or replacement parts, or maybe each of those events triggers a new level of disclosure, by the time this product is completely EOL and you are no longer supporting it in any way, it is my belief that the full schematics just need to be published. Yeah, and there's there's potentially another way to approach this that I thought of while you were talking, which is like like you're talking, and this is generally how policy goes, so it makes sense, but you're talking about like uh, restrictions that maybe lift over time. Yeah. Um, or I guess more restrictions that come in place over time. You have to release more things over time, which kind of makes sense to me because it's going to be more interesting to repair this thing after it's been out for a year, 24 months, et cetera. Yeah, um, and it's going to be more likely to come up, right? Like I, most of them aren't going to fail in the first year. And if they do, saying, they're going to yeah. be immediately replaced under warranty. Yeah. So once you would get to the, the uh, external repair shop stage, those things would be available. Um, but I, I could also see a more positive reinforcement angle potentially working where you go the route of like innovation grants to to companies that are willing to support things that are like right to repair. So like it, you, you know, the like uh, up here, there's like shred and all that other stuff. Yeah. You could have that same system or maybe a very similar system start applying to companies that are willing to help repair shops keep their things around. Um, Gremlin Injector over on Float Planes got an interesting idea. Um, says EOL could be gamed. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, we've seen we've seen dishonesty from manufacturers in terms of whether or not they are actually still producing a particular part. Like 100%. theoretically, it's up on their website, but no one's been able to buy it for six months. Um, why don't you just make it by the time the first unit sold is no longer under warranty? Because that puts pressure on manufacturers from two fronts. One Extend is to warranty. support them for longer and two is to provide more information i think you'd need to get into the weeds of how you define warranties and stuff at that point but that's something you could do um doesn't seem insurmountable that'd be cool i'd like that uh alex p from our editing team asks so what about bankruptcies or companies that disappear i man see that's ooh, that's tough now it's very i shouldn't say very rare but i i think it's not i think I'm pretty sure that it's less common these days for companies to utterly disappear the way they might have 100 years ago because of how much value of a company is tied up in its intellectual property and its patents. So I would say that that responsibility should fall to whoever the acquirer is, whoever the acquiring party is. And if they do actually disappear outright, I see no reason whatsoever why that internal information shouldn't just be public domain. As for who administers that, well, that gets a lot more challenging. Uh, uh, Gremlin Injector also said, innovation grants equals free money, LOL. Um, yeah, and it's crazy. I had a conversation with someone very recently about this, about how it's been very hard for us to get things like shred credits and stuff. Um, even when like, I'm not even trying for certain things that I know don't apply, but there's certain things that we do that 100% applies. And we, we push for it, and then we end up getting in this situation where it like becomes this 
endless paper train that they want us to to fight for and then you look at, you look at mobile game developers <laughs> and they have the one that i know of the best has a department which is a legal team department their entire job is capturing government grants that's literally all they do throughout the entire year is they fight legal battles for government grants and i'm like yeah it sucks that that is a profitable thing to have on your team that sucks. Yeah. Personally, I think that sucks. I don't know. I don't want to get like way into the weeds of it, but that's that's unfortunate. When oh, production services tax credits are the exact same thing. I'm sure. By the time you reach the scale where you can engage with the government of Canada and get that stuff pushed through, you don't need it nearly as badly as yeah. you did five years ago when you didn't have the kind of time and resources. It's yeah. extraordinarily frustrating. And that entire industry seems to be set up to make sure that that information doesn't leak outside of the, I'm going to use the term old boys club, even though there's plenty of not boys who are not old in it. But I think you understand the connotation yeah. of an old boys club. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't want that information about how to do it to leak out. There's so many things that are like that. Like you'd think it just wouldn't be political. Uh, realtors are the same way. Like you've got, uh -huh. we have encountered <laughs> situations where we know for a fact that especially commercial realtors are the worst, where they are absolutely not acting in good faith in the to, to best represent their client because they'll basically, they, we've been told- They get a percentage. Past, so if it sells for more, they make more money. Well, no, not just that. We've been told in the past that they won't even look at our offer unless we are represented by a commercial realtor that they approve, for example. Like the selling retailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so our representative needs to be like their buddy so that everyone can just, you yeah, know, yeah, it, it's a hundred percent. Yeah. It's gross. Yeah. It's gross. And like, okay. Residential real estate, generally speaking, does a pretty good job of ending up on MLS or Rue or whatever else. Commercial very rarely does. It usually changes hands before even being publicly listed. And a lot of the public listings are just like, it's like the client forced them to do it. Like just utterly bare bones, almost never pricing, like most of the information you need isn't there. So you, you end up having to contact them and go and see it anyway. And it's by yeah. design. It's so that they don't have to work with anyone that they don't want to. I I I hate it. The whole the whole realtor grift is extremely frustrating, which isn't to say that I don't use one or value the services that ours provides. Uh, a very, very knowledgeable uh, you know, broker or agent or you know, whatever else or assistant or whatever you want to call it. When, when you're being when you're going through a, a transaction that it is likely to be, if not will be, the largest that you will go through in your entire life, having an expert guiding hand, yeah, can be pretty useful. It's just that most of the ones that I've encountered are flipping idiots who are just looking to make a quick buck. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of money in it, so. Yeah, yeah there really shouldn't be as much as there is. No offense. Canada's real estate situation. Kinda, yeah. You know. <clears throat> All right. What are we supposed to be talking about? Stuff, tech things, uh, not <laughs> real no. estate. No. I want to talk about LTTstore.com. Hey. Okay, you guys complained. We heard you. The women's sweatpants and crop top sweaters are now available with embroidery. That's right. You can now get all the tech tips embroidered on your sweater. Look at that. Nice. It just says tech tips? Well, what? You want it to say something other than that? Uh, you know, I don't know. I like the uh, I like the rainbow one on the on the pants. Yeah, the rainbow one's sweet. The rainbow one's pretty dope. Yeah. So we have a couple different designs. These oh, are... there's two. To... Okay, okay, I get it. I yeah, get these it. are these are pre pre orders. So they're expected to ship by May twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. We're getting them embroidered locally. So uh, embroidered in Canada. Yo, the block design is cool. The yeah. block design is really cool. That's not actually the one I preferred. I preferred you the like the script one. one. I did. Yeah, I like the block one. And in other news, we've got another promo. We do have some uh, items we need to get moving a little bit faster. So if you use code MEMELORD for the next seven days 
and pick up a Linus selfie or sad Linus desk pad, you will get the sequin pillow for the price of zero dollars. That's right. It will be included for you. Dang. Very cool. Here, hold on. I'm just going to go ahead and bring these up so you guys can see. Linus's screen. Here, let's scroll through all the other things that we might actually make money on. Um, oh, wait. Nick says the date is wrong. Hold on. That uh -oh. wrong. It's not May 25th. I need to update that. Sorry. Oh, no. Oh, the 27th or something. I guess. I don't know. Soon. Soon. CTM. Anyway, here's some actually profitable things I'm going to scroll past that you guys could also buy. Um, you know, as part of your order when you're getting free pillows. So if you pick up either of these mouse pads, the desk pad or the mouse pad, you will get this sequin pillow or, oh, one of them. Okay, cool. There you go. The reviews are excellent for the sequin pillow. We just ordered too many of them. <laughs> it happens. It's part of All the right. inventory. What are we talking about next? We take the lab in X days. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's talk about that. I can't believe you are going to have an office for the first time, I think, since you worked here. Private office? No. In 12 days? No. When did you have a private office before? I had your office for like a long time. Oh, yeah, that's true. And then I took it. And then you took it. Well, I mean, in fairness, and you were not in it. And then now I work in the lounge. Yes. Well, okay. So for On the, my laptop. For the second that's time. That's literally falling apart. For the second time. Okay. It's awesome. You can afford a new laptop. Yeah. And if I you needed it. one issued, you could just ask logistics. I don't want to ask. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. This is how. This is how. You know the what? The laptop's actually completely fine. I don't you want to do it. You can see. <laughs> you can see the topic. Okay. You can see the topic right above that. What? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I actually didn't read that. And you play into this narrative <laughs> that I'm some kind of monster. Because it's funny. Yeah, but people think it seriously. <laughs> I still think it's funny. I think it's funny too. We did, oh man, we did this intro for the moving oh, blog man. video where I'm like, I'm assembling my logistics Avengers. And the number of actually serious comments actually concerned that they look so unenthusiastic to be there. Like I have, like I have some kind of gun to their head, forcing <laughs> them to come help me move because I'm some kind of weird awful overbearing boss or something and i'm sitting here going they were told it's completely completely optional they were paid okay they were paid and they were instructed I before that shot to look unenthusiastic because it's funny yeah because it's funny when people have to help someone move it sucks and you know what? It's it's. I don't think it sucks. I've always liked helping people move. Yeah, but it's like it's a meme. It's because it's not me. If I, every time I have had to move, I hate it. But if I help someone else move, it's like oh, this is cool. Of course, we had fun. We were hanging out for the whole day and like running around with running around with Andy yelling content at things. And it was entertaining. Exactly. Content. <laughs> <laughs> and let me put it this way: they they were fine. Okay, but we worked out a deal where it was fine. Like, just chill. It's unbelievable. I, I don't force people to work here. Like, you ordered lunch for people too? I actually don't have that power. <laughs> if people didn't want to be here, they could just leave. I mean, some of them do, and they're fine because the people who work here are world class employees. It's not hard for them to find a freaking job. Ugh! So Anyways, if Luke needed my, a new laptop, falling apart he could have laptop. one. You want a new laptop? No, actually. Here. No, no, no. Here. I don't Just take want, it. I don't want it. Just take it. I know. No. Are you going to pull out another I one? I don't want it anymore. You have, you have, I, have, I get two laptops now. Okay. There. Just, here. You know I'm what? Just take it. this one, too. I, thank you. There. I actually I'm going to go get more. more. I'll keep this one. This one's pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't want a new laptop, actually, unless it's this one. I would, I would keep this one. This one's sick. Yeah, I mean, I'll take a laptop. You want one? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you if they're just being handed out. Here, no, you can take this one. Oh, thanks. I'll, I'll come grab it later. Yeah, thanks. yeah, no worries. You can have that one. That one's the coolest one. Um, yeah, so the laptop's fine, which is why I don't have a new one. It is falling apart. Oh, oh God. my goodness. Oh, God. Oh, I hope this is a folding laptop. I think it is. <laughs> 
Is that enough laptops for you? <laughs> this is a folding laptop, right? Yeah, it has that kind of hinge. I think it's fine. Oh, God! Okay. 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 Thanks. Now we have enough laptops. So we've solved that problem. <laughs> once and for all. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, eventually I'll be able to see my laptop again. There we go. Perfect. Anyway, we take the lab in uh, twelve days. Uh, but yeah, but then it's not—it's not my own office, right? Okay, it is. What? So I don't think it is. It's complicated. Yeah. You're gonna have two places to sit. You're gonna be downstairs with Gary and the developers because. So who who how who's all how big is that room? Like who all is? It's sitting big. In there? It's five people. Five. Okay, so. So that'll be both... just labs developers. Yeah, they're both on probation right now. But those two people plus yep. one more. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, but for now. For now. Sure. Uh, but what I like about that location is it's extremely central. Yeah. You guys will be, there's a, like a stairwell right there to the top floor, which is where the LTT writing team is going to move. The LTT writers are going to move to the lab. Uh, and then you are just one door away from the lunchroom, which is nice. And then you're one other more different door away from the bottom office, which is going to be everything that is not LTT writing. So writing for every other you know, MAC address and, you know, whatever circuits, short sure. circuit or whatever. Yeah. So that's going into lab two. Because yeah. that was up in the air last time. No, they're going to lab two. Okay. I think. Okay, don't quote me on that. <laughs> okay. And then you'll also are actually, you're in like this little aquarium with like windows and you're looking out into the shop floor as it is now. Oh, that's cool. But what will be the lab? Oh, that's really cool. So you're extremely central. And then oh, that staircase, sick. right at the top of the stairs is a call room that is just yours. Cool. So you, actually most of the time, because I'm kind of expecting you, this is funny. We're like actually having a meeting right now because yeah. these are things Luke actually does not know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Most because you're going to be guiding the development efforts of the lab, where Gary's, I, I, I'm expecting to have sort of the, the the vision for how we are collecting and presenting this data, but he has, to my knowledge, no experience managing developers whatsoever. So we're so gonna far the help. ones that we have are just like fantastic and need very little management. So. Good, <laughs> it's been, but, been great. But we will need your help. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to be there to be a resource, and then the other. 80% of the time or whatever that works out, you can be in your office. And I expect you to just kind of ping pong Bounce between around. those two yeah. those two locations. Yeah, and as long as there's dual monitors on each end, I don't really care. Well, there's whatever you want on each end. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, Sweet. honestly, for how much you cost, uh, a couple of monitors <laughs> or laptops here and there is sort of a I don't know. minor I, concern. I, I got to keep using this this broken in half laptop because he won't, he won't yeah, give me a new so one. Yeah, so this guy memes being poor. <laughs> and normally, okay, normally it would be against our HR policies for me to disclose any information about the earnings of an employee. Yeah, but I, mean, I feel like he's kind of got it coming at this point. He's not poor. <laughs> I'm fine. This is a complete f***ing fabrication. <laughs> this image. This, I only wear clothes I get for free. I mean, he does. That's true. It's not I'm a... wearing LTT underwear. I'd be wearing LTT socks if you freaking made them. I've been waiting for years. <laughs> but he's not poor. I just, I don't see a ton of value in spending a lot of money. And and genuinely, I'm I'm bugging him, but my laptop is fine. I don't have to do anything complicated on it. I watch videos and I type things. I don't need like a really high performance laptop. It's fine. How do you think he stays rich? They say, well, not by holding on to cash these days. That's for sure. Gotta love that inflation. inflation. I love yeah. that it has the name inflation, but what it actually means is that deflation. your buying power is going down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. It's pretty it's pretty rough. As far as I can tell, there's no safe haven right now. Gold has stayed pegged at a pretty consistent value compared to the USD. Uh crypto is like <laughs> stocks. <laughs> I mean, what government bonds? I haven't looked at those recently. Property. But even then, government bonds typically only appreciate at a very low rate compared to dollars no i mean even no I, well okay i don't know about everywhere but canadian here in Vancouver, property no it's going down right now uh, well it's yeah. like poised for a crash 
finally, because we don't have zero interest rates, which are stupid. <laughs> like, what? Wh where are you? Where are you supposed to put it? I don't get it. So, someone message said, "Best cheap gaming laptop video, please." I'm super stuck. If you listen to what I just said, I wouldn't have a lot of good input because I don't use it for gaming. Yeah. The only things I use it for is not gaming. So apparently there's a seven to nine percent bond right now. Okay, so if you want to tread water, apparently this is not financial advice. We don't know. Yeah, apparently that's potentially maybe an option, but uh, I don't know anything about that. My investment is to keep dumping money into LMG and hope that that works, because it sure isn't my house. Uh oh. You got to try out. You got to try out the thing that we did yesterday. Um, you're 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 coming over tonight, right? Yeah. Okay. So yesterday. Well, I don't know where to go. Which I don't know where you're actually like staying at this point. Oh, we're at the new house. Okay. okay. Yeah. So this is pretty exciting, man. It was like kind of an emotional experience for me, because yesterday we Dude, turned on. Me helping you move out of your house was emotional experience for me. I can't even imagine. Oh, it's like... a different one. It's yeah. A different emotional oh, experience. Okay. It was like. I, I was sitting there thinking, I made it because we set up the home theater. Like, not finished, finished, but pretty much finished. And it is jaw dropping. I bet. I have never seen anything like it. Better than a movie theater? Oh, pfft. movie theater? Please. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my. I will never set foot in a movie theater again. There will be no I'm reason actually, for that. I'm actually so excited to watch Kingsman. I know, right? We got to... Yep. So, so, so we both independently watched the first Kingsman on planes without knowing that we both did it. And then we're raving about it to each other about how cool it was. Yeah. And we, to be clear, we know they're stupid. We know they're stupid movies. Yeah, it doesn't get, matter. Get like, over yourself. That's like the point. Mars of, Attacks is a stupid movie. And it's great. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> um, then we went and saw Kingsman 2 together, and it was fantastic. And yep. then Kingsman 3 kind of came out. And I just, like, for, didn't notice. Me neither. There was, like, there was a global pandemic, and there was so much going on at work, Stuff and, like, happening. I was moving. And... Yeah. It completely whooshed me. So we're going to watch it in the theater, and I'm yeah. actually really stoked. I'm super excited. And, yes, we know the second one was even dumber. That's the point. It was awesome. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it, man. It when... Uh, when you gotta know what El you're Elton going into. John pull, pulls I was, up. <laughs> I was, the whole thing was just great. I don't know. I, I uh, people. I, I remember seeing like, oh, it didn't like mature past the first one. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> That's the point. I didn't want it to. Look, there's certain kinds of movies where it's less about what you're watching and it's more about who you're watching it with. Like, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even consider sitting down with Yvonne on the couch and being like, <laughs> let's watch Kingsman. <laughs> It's not that she can't doesn't have a sense of humor or that she can't enjoy that type of humor. It's just it's not like her thing. The way that it, you know, if you're just like broing out and you're like, <laughs> let's play Bro Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro deter. Is it, is it the, the first Kingsman. Oh, I don't want to give spoilers just in case people are hearing about it for the first time. Um, but yeah, there's like a there's a musical scene at the end of I think it's the first Kingsman, and there's all the rainbow colors. I'm not trying to get into what happens. I don't remember. Okay, but the first time that happens, it's just it's just a riot. But yeah. I can absolutely understand. Like, yeah, if my mom was watching it, probably not very impressed. Yeah, yeah, it's it's but like kind of gross, hilarious to me. Um, oh, this is a good question. True Scott asks over on Float Plane. Did you get the Vanta Black sorted for the walls in the theater room? Okay, mm. so Vanta Black we can't get because Vanta Black is exclusively for scientific use or something, or there's like one artist that's licensed to use it. It's a whole stupid thing. You want to go down a stupid rabbit hole and find a stupid rabbit? By all means, go research the whole Vanta Black fiasco. Anyway, Black 3.0 is the competitor to Vanta Black that just anyone can get as long as you're willing to pay. And I was thinking we should paint the theater room Vanta, or excuse me, Vanta, black 3.0 because it will absorb the light that bounces off the white screen around the room and then back onto the white screen wrecking your contrast because it'll, it'll light up. The light from the bright parts of the scene will bounce around and hit what are supposed to be the dark parts of the scene, um, ruining the perceived contrast. 
But all the comments on the moving vlog were like, um, actually, you just need to put velvet on the walls. And I was like, oh, duh. That actually makes way more sense because then you're going to absorb and scatter it. And apparently it's a fraction of the cost. So you just need to find some kind of adhesive. Also sound stuff too. Yeah, adhesive or staples are some of the common ways to put it up. One of the other common ways is to actually attach it to some kind of board that you then staple up in panels. And you could make that your acoustic panels as well. So there's like whole guides for how to velour or velvet up your home theater. And I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of, you know, the, the, the ceiling, maybe the whole thing. And then the sides, maybe, I don't know, four to eight feet would probably do a lot of it. That would probably get us a lot of the way. So I think that's going to be the plan because if we can do it for a fraction of the cost and have it be removable, well, that's pretty great. Then if there's an acoustic benefit to it as well, then there's there's no way to... Yeah, that's sweet. There's no way to lose at that point. That's awesome. It's almost like the DIY people over on forums like uh, AVS have been doing this for 20 plus years and already know how to do it. Uh, for flocking slash velvet, it's called sizing, not adhesive. Fun fact for the day. Thanks, Gan Ganja Gremlin. Is velvet not a fire hazard? I mean, not if you spray it with fire retardant, I guess. Uh, I don't know. That's got it. Yeah. Duvetine wouldn't be. So we could use duvetine. Duvetine is extremely fire resistant. So just line it with duve. There, done. Nice. I actually wonder what the performance of uh, duvetine versus. Uh, sorry, what did I just say? Um, duvetine versus velvet? Uh, versus velvet, yeah. Showing results for duvetine commando cloth or a velour. Look at this. There's whole articles. Thanks, Charles. What? Charles what? H. Stewart dot com. Your leading edge scenic design and backdrop rental company for over a hundred years. Okay, fabric to ba, to ba woven masking fabrics made from one hundred percent cotton. A few subtle differences. Okay. No. Oh, commando cloth is apparently better. There's no pinholes of light. Okay, but then if you have a little bit of light shine through the duvetine, that's probably not going to make it yeah, back through. So yeah. probably yeah, because you're not you're not like hanging it in the middle of the room. You're putting it up against the wall. Probably different properties. Whoa, commando cloth is more like jeans. It's double the weight with uh, a 100 yard roll coming in at 100 pounds compared you just to just put 55. Up jeans on the wall. Mm, the lure. Knit napped fabric that's memorable for its lush feel. Mm, very nice. Velour and velvet. I don't know opposite. if I want to spend time in the in the Wait, dark. This whole <laughs> article is just to tell you what they are and not to tell me which one to... Gosh darn it, Charles H. Stewart. I'm not impressed. Not impressed, not one bit. Oh, man. So we'll, we'll figure out exactly what material, but duvetine would probably be safer. Uh, there's a note in the doc for a hammer time update. Um, I don't know how many people are going to even know this story at this point. Um, but stop the, hammer time as it's, but yeah, but Sorry. the, uh, the whole, uh, coal bar hammer situation, uh, it has now officially been over a year because the last update was in April, 2021 and it's now May, 2022 and there has been no update. Uh, there's a there's a button from Kickstarter now to if anonymously I don't care if it was anonymous or not but anonymously request an update I don't think that was there in the past and I clicked it do I think that's going to do anything no um, but hey I really really hope that this ends with me receiving something not even because I even wanted any an more. NFT of a cool bar hammer. Sure. Just, I just, I want the story to conclude. And as long as there's no, like, if it just goes off with no update and no item received, then I'm just left hanging like, what happened? Yeah. And if you get an NFT, then you can still be like, what happened? But you can have this sick board monkey hammer. <laughs> board, board, board. <laughs> if, if it's just a picture of a board ape holding this like weird hammer, dude, whatever. At least I get something. A t-shirt with a picture of the hammer. Yeah. Like I just, I want the story to end. That's where I'm at right now. I, I just want there to be some form of ending so that I can have closure. Um, 
That's about it. You want to talk about Microsoft patenting a system to play discs on consoles with no disc drive? Uh, I'd rather talk about how we should both feel really old. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a super chat. Guys, don't send, don't super, send chats. super chats. We don't read them. You want to send merch messages. Uh, go buy something on LTTstore.com and send a merch message. They'll pop up down here. Or our producer, Jake Bellavance, uh, might read them to us. And they are the way to send a message because the they cost the same, but you actually get something in the mail when you're done. Haha, -ha, it's amazing. But this is one that's worth reading. Uh, Matthew says... I've been watching your show since freshman in high school, now going for my PhD. It's been a little while. Ouch. It's been a little while. I uh, I got a bunch of tweets from someone talking about our first WAN show and some of the like comments and predictions we made on it. Oh. It's actually kind of interesting. Um, I talked about Apple abandoning Intel for ARM. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> you and I both said that Disney buying star wars was a good thing um there there was some good ones there was some bad ones but it was interesting seeing like what we were talking about back then it was kind of cool yeah i rewatched the first like third of rogue one and it was fine yeah so it it, it rogue one is the the like best one that they've released it though it could have like it could have actually been okay yeah and then it, it wasn't yeah pretty much Alrighty then. We should also talk about our sponsors. Your your reason for thinking that it was okay, mm -hmm. you you grabbed a scholastic book of uh, Phantom of the Menace, and you were like, it can't be better than this. The or it can't be worse than this. Oh, the Phantom of the Menace. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Uh, Origin PC! If you're looking for a thin and light custom laptop, check out Origin PC's new Evo 17S. The new 20 millimeter thick laptop features an RTX 3080 Ti, a 17.3 inch QHD 240 hertz LED backlit screen, and you can upgrade it to up to an Intel Core i9-12900H, eight terabytes of storage, and 64 gigs of DDR5 memory. It's Wi-Fi 6, HDMI 2.1, and weighs just over five pounds. Plus, you can add your choice of HD UV print, laser etch, or custom paint to your Evo 17S to match your own personal style. All Origin PC products include free lifetime 24-7 US-based tech support and are backed by a lifetime service agreement, giving you dedicated labor, service, and support. And you get all of this at a competitive price compared to what is out there in the market. Check out the Origin PC Evo 17S at the link down below. The show is also brought to you by Zoho Desk. If you run a business, you know just how important customer service is to retaining clients. Zoho Desk is a context-aware help desk to keep customers happy while your company keeps doing what it does best. Oh, I could switch to my cam. Hey, look at that. What does context-aware mean? Well, Zotech, Zo Zotech, Zoho Desk's AI assistant, Zia, helps you quickly see your customer's sentiments at a glance, whether from online chats, phone calls, emails, or elsewhere. Let Zoho Desk take care of other tasks so your agents can focus on assisting customers and keep your processes fluid with easy automation options and pull up sales or product information with Zoho Desk's built-in document library. Plus, your agents will have access to a ton of different dashboards so they can keep track of metrics like ticket traffic and happiness ratings. Service is the key to a happy customer, so let Zoho Desk put it at the heart of your company. Find out why 50 thousand businesses worldwide trust zoho desk for their help desk needs and save 50 percent with code zdesk50 using the link down below finally the show is brought to you by secret lab i would tell you about it but it's a secret but it's a secret yes thank you luke that's very good no that's problem. very good no i like problem. it I got you. secret lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play and honestly man I'm so glad we use them on the WAN show now that we're doing these two, two and a half, sometimes three hour shows <laughs> because we've had chair sponsors in the past that seemed fine until I had to sit in them for, for a long time, a long, long, long time. And I'm like, uh, uh, the Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four way lumbar support, comes with a magnetic 
Oh, shoot, this is the old one that doesn't have the magnetic headrest pillow. <laughs> anyway, a memory foam magnetic pillow and is offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Nappa leather. With up to a five-year extended warranty and 49-day return policy, you are covered if anything goes wrong, so head to the link in the video description to check out Secret Lab today. All right, what are we talking next? Should we talk Elon Gate continues? I'm gonna let you do it this time. I don't want to. I don't want any... This is... A zero, a zero hot take. It's so not interesting to me, which might not help. Oh man, Anthony. Okay, can I read Anthony's editorializing? This is not mine. Do you really want to? Yep. Anthony <sighs> says, don't call it Elon Gate. Don't let him control the narrative that way. It's amusing, <laughs> but don't. Call it something lame, like a musky <laughs> meltdown, because that's all he deserves. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> Man, we should make Anthony's new job to write put downs. Just be sassy. Like, yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> sassy Anthony is a pretty amazing Anthony. I, yeah. I don't want to add, like, you know, more gas to the flames, but that was funny when I read it. Um, I don't know. This is so not interesting to me. Basically, he's trying to potentially get out of it or get a discount because there's way more bots than they claimed. Allegedly. Uh, they're like. Yes, allegedly, but No, no, I also... meant allegedly he's trying to get oh. out of it. I don't think he's actually confirmed that he's trying to just have peak buyer's remorse and I think, squirm out I of it. I think what he's saying, and might be doing, I don't know. I don't know the guy. Um, I think what he's saying is that he just, it should be cheaper. Because, like, what he's buying is not what it actually is. Yeah, because he's the one claimed... who made the offer. And if he didn't yeah, know... He made the offer if based he didn't on know that it's all bots, then he's a f***ing idiot. <laughs> So oh, I said I wasn't going to have any hot takes today. I mean, and it's over! <laughs> anyone who doesn't know... It's happened! Anyone who doesn't know Twitter is full of bots, like, what? Are you at... Has he ever opened one of his own tweets? Because I, I, from my experience on the platform, the most, like, botted responses ever go on his tweets because it's all pictures of him saying he's going to give people free crypto. Which must work or else they would stop doing it. But it's like under every tweet, it's like, by the way, guys, giving away free crypto, click link, thank you, from like an account that has this picture and that's it. It's clearly not him. <sighs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I don't know. That's like literally the whole story, but it's like super long. Um, <laughs> we can get into it more if you want. Um, it's There's a $1 billion reverse termination fee, but they might be able to force him to not do that because he would have to prove that it's more than 5% bots. And how can he do that without having access to their server? Yeah, so they can they can make him close the deal if they get a court order. Um, if, if they can't, he definitely has to pay a billion dollars to walk away. But I think a big part of the problem and why they might want to force him to do it is because this whole fiasco has tanked Twitter stock even more than the rest of tech over the last six months. Cause tech has just been absolutely, which is like probably good. Cause it was insanely overvalued. Um, but you know, like they want that price now, obviously, cause for it's sure. a pretty freaking good deal for Apparently them. Apparently they popped the point, champagne in this meeting. That's not in these notes, but I've from from someone who works at Twitter, they were talking about how they pop champagne in this meeting because they're like, we got them. Really? I guess. I don't know. I don't know all the details because I never cared. I didn't know this was going to be in the doc. This is so uninteresting this to is me. Hilarious. Excessively rich person might be getting screwed over by a company that was excessively overvalued. Like, <laughs> whatever, dude. I don't know. But it could be. It, it's at the point now where paying the billion dollar penalty to walk away. And then coming in and offering again would could be a literally way, be worth it. Could be completely worth it. Yeah. Um, if they don't force the buyout, they could sue Musk for damages capped at one billion, or try to reach a settlement for a greater amount. Uh, Musk seems like he's gearing up for a fight, though. Oh, tweeting yeah. on Friday that he is. This is great. Building a hardcore litigation department where we directly initiate and execute lawsuits. Nice. Nice. That's hardcore, that man. That sounds really cool. That's and hardcore. With it. Let's go. It's, like, it's hardcore. To try to uh, balance out the, the Elon news a little bit. Yeah. Um, it sounds like... Uh, Ooh, I lost the original link for this. Hold on. Uh, Tesla released all service manuals and wiring diagrams for free. 
Really? Um, yeah, they used to be really Ooh. expensive. You can access them, but they were like very oppressively expensive. It was $32 an hour or $106 a day or $372 a month or $3,188 a year. So documents as a service? Pretty much. That's horrible. And then they just changed the yearly price to $0. Well, that's great. Yeah. What, you're not going to applaud with me? You're going to leave me completely hanging? Fine. In that case, why do we need to look at you? Yeah, I'm still here, by the way. What's up? Zoom Which, it. Zoom hey. it. Get him out of here. Hey, don't. I think he'd have to like physically do it. No, he can do it. Can he? I believe in him. Oh, you could software it. You could just crop it. Just get closer to, to the screen and it'll be like, it's oh, only lines. Okay, I'll work yeah, on true. It. Yeah, you could sit in front of the desk. That would work. <laughs> I have to do your wait. I have to do your sound effects. <laughs> right, because I've got no mic. There's there. no mic up there. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I guess I don't know. People what? like. What do you mean you guess? That's amazing. Uh, yeah. A lot of the articles talking about it are like we learned all these new things, and I'm like, well, no, because no, it's not new. People had still had access to, access it, to it. It was just paid. So it's it is very cool that it is free because uh, while for like a, a shop or something. 3200 bucks a year might not be that bad. I mean, no, it was more than that a year. 32 bucks was per day. No, 3200. Oh, 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 oh. Cuz it was 3188, so I Got rounded it. up slightly. 3200 bucks a year. I mean, it sucks, but it's not going to like crush your shop or anything. <sighs> um unless you aren't servicing Teslas constantly. Yeah. Yeah, it might actually suck a lot. I I think the the best this is for though is like people who might be able to do some of these repair jobs at home. Cuz like <laughs> $32 an hour? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I don't know. That sucks. Knowing me, I would um, pay for the hour and then permanently have all the documentation. Yeah, there's probably a way to do that. But but, uh, but just providing it, it just is sucks. better. It should be free. And I'm really stoked that it is free and I, that's cool. I'd like to know what the other car manufacturers do. I think you have to buy those like huge service manuals. I think whoa, my knowledge on that is very old. Yeah, if They're anyone in the chat knows more, that would be that would be great. Let us know. In the meantime, let's talk about uh, oh, we should do some merch Anything messages. Anything else? Oh, nice. Let's do some merch messages. Awesome. Uh, Bell hit us from Gabriel. I've been watching for a while and just been, built my first PC. What's a decent priced keyboard with swappable switches and gamer RGB that'll make me faster? Uh, you know what? I'm going to leave that to the chat because, frankly, swappable switches... Pretty much any mechanical keyboard has swappable switches <laughs> well, if, if, you, you if you try hard enough. If you try hard enough, yeah. <laughs> uh, If you want, like, quick swappable switches, uh, you're mostly looking at the case that's involved. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I haven't done a lot of keyboard shopping since swappable switches became plate, a whatever. big feature that anyone cares about. So I'll I'll let the chat I'll let the chat kind of chat with you about that. That's All also right. pretty true for me. There's kind of like a wave two of keyboard nerds. I just really just don't think I care about swappable switches. It's not the kind of thing that I would um do. Yeah, honestly. I I might repair. Like I might care about being able to repair it, but I have the soldering skills to just solder in a new switch, so I don't need a socket for it. So I just don't care. Whatever you do, do not buy drop.com. Why? Yeah, why? I don't personally like it when statements like that are made with nothing qualifying behind it. I mean, it. they definitely have good stuff. Like yeah. the drop pandas yeah. are freaking amazing. So I don't know. Oh, my Honda S2000 official manual cost around $200, says biz someone in float plane chat. All right, that's good to know. Is that a permanent... I, oh, I had to pay VW for a service manual for my Jetta. It was 50 bucks. Okay, all right. So it sounds like Tesla was kind of out to lunch on their pricing. I was able to buy the dead tree versions. I like that. Of complete maintenance and technical manuals for my Tahoe for 350 bucks. That's in line with what my understanding was for a long time. Got it. Got it. But they're usually like genuinely like really big. Right. Okay. From Colin. Question for either of you. This came up after he'd mentioned how everyone here is world class. Do you keep in touch with any of the former former LMG employees? 
Um, some of them, yeah. I mean, like uh, you mentioned Max specifically. We did a photo shoot with her. Um, it was a oh man, it was a couple of years ago now. It was like pre-COVID, but we actually hired her as a freelance photographer afterward. Um, I'm still in touch with Ivan, as you guys know, because we did the uh, the charity auction with his GPU collection quite recently. He was looking to reach a bigger audience with it, so we uh, we agreed to collaborate on that. I was in contact with Burkle for quite a while, and we don't exactly talk that often anymore, but for no negative reason. And I still like follow his shenanigans on the Instagrams. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's gonna depend, right? Like whenever I open that app once a half year it's one of those things where it's like you know how many people from high school are you still in touch with yeah we're at the point now where there's been it's been that long in total like 75 people who have come and gone through here and or maybe they're not gone yet but who are at some point going to be gone nobody works at the same place forever right and so am i going to stay bffs with every single one of them no um you know i I'd like to, I, you know, when I had uh, when I had Taryn's exit meeting, I I made it very clear that my intention was to engage in a collaborative manner, you know, post L, post LMG. Um, you know, I'd like to think that Luke and I would stay friends forever, even nope. if we weren't working. To... <laughs> Do you need more laptops? Is that what this <laughs> yeah. is about? Yeah. <laughs> I took them all away. <laughs> <laughs> you to remove the weapons. <laughs> um. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Like it's, uh, it's tough. Uh, ECU 55 asks, is John still here? Yeah, absolutely. He, he moved back home. So he's working remotely now, but yeah, he's still here. We actually have extremely low turnover given that we're approaching our 10th birthday now. Like I think we've, I can count on both hands, the people who we hired at some point and who are not still here, uh, not including people who didn't make it through the three month probationary period. There's a, in Canada, or at least in BC, there's a three-month trial period where either party with no strings attached whatsoever can just say, you know what, this isn't this isn't working, uh, which is really good because there's definitely been some square peg round hole situations that just aren't anybody's fault. Where it just yeah, just yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad this isn't complicated. Bye bye. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. it happens. It happens. No one's ever quit full plane. I'm actually very proud of that and will be very happy when that ends. But I hope uh, when, not if, but when it does end, that it's on good terms. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a big thing is like, I don't I don't want any bad blood in my life. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs that drama. Mm -hmm. From Jason, after so many years, do you guys ever still feel anxiety in front of the camera or in crowds? Uh, crowds, yeah. I mean, I've I, uh, I've worked hard to be a um like a more outgoing person sorry like outgoing uh oh sorry piper g i just accidentally curated your thing which means it won't show up down here but you didn't really ask a question so welcome to the show yeah it's uncurated now thanks bell um <clears throat> sorry sorry this is what happens when i get involved in con comment moderation what was the question <laughs> Uh, do we do we still get anxiety in front of the camera? Or oh, yeah, crowds, crowds aren't easy for me. I don't actually like it. I enjoy aspects of it, but it when I when I spend a bunch of time in a group of people, like when we get when we get home or when we get to the next rest point, like my wife doesn't even talk to me, not because she doesn't want to or because she hates me or because I would lash out at her or anything like crazy, but just because she knows I'm going to need some decompression time because I just don't. I don't, I don't, it doesn't come naturally to me. It's one of those things where I, I was a, just a geeky guy first and then just learned slowly how to do this. Like I, no, it's, it's kind of funny. I was kind of a, a class clown, like a bit of an attention seeker in school, but I was never good at it. I never got any kind of good attention. That's new. <laughs> I was going to say, I can't imagine you not being attention seeking class clown. But then I do find it really funny, just you being really bad at it. Yeah, that's pretty entertaining. Yeah, like I was. I haven't experienced you in that state, but it's just funny. funny to like think about. Yeah, and like people didn't like me. Like I wasn't <laughs> charismatic. Right. So, <laughs> I I like the crowds. I um, but I get the same thing where afterwards I'm, like super drained, like super emotionally drained. Yeah. But I think 
just because of like growing up going to PAX every single year and having the PAX crowd kind of grow around with me. Cause like the first time I went to PAX, it was like 5,000 people or something. Right. And these days it's like 80 plus. Um, I like the crowd. So when it's generally like-minded people, so at events like PAX, at events like LTX, stuff like that, um, it feels, yeah, I feel at home there for some reason. IEM Dallas, I, I like the crowds at IEM. Um, yeah, but it is it is definitely still draining. Camera, I don't think so. Camera can be tough, especially when combined with a crowd. I'd say that's the situation that's where I tough. still feel it most. When I was on stage at is it LTX. Anxiety? Do you feel anxiety though? Or is it just a lot of mental energy trying to make sure that you're you're on the ball? There's definitely some nerves. Like when I when I had to go out and do a panel being broadcast live while also having a live audience in front of me, the man, the live audience is so much fun, but it's also so much more nerve wracking because if you think something's gonna land. And it's like you don't want to you don't have that like silence. What was it, Jeb Bush or whatever, where he's like, "Please clap." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't want to have that moment. <laughs> Speaking of Bush moments, you see the uh, you see the oh, little no. verbal blunder. Oh yeah, I don't think we should get into that, but yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, one second. Uh, uh, hello, uh, Freud. Freud, is that <laughs> is that you? I just. Yeah, why why are you call how'd you get this number? Sorry, sorry, I'm Are you alive? Just, are you uh, hello, hello? Hello from beyond the gray? Saddam? Oh man. Oh boy. Uh, um, anyways, next question. <laughs> from Sydney. Hi Linus. I'd like to challenge your views on game items. Uh, How's it different uh, from a movie? You pay some money to look at something and feel emotions, pride, confidence, joy, etc. How are and you gonna keep it for longer than two hours? How are game items different than a movie? <laughs> Luke, can I just remind you that this is a paying customer you're laughing at right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> you're being kind of I just, that's just so, oh, man. Oh, gee, I mean, mm, uh, uh, hmm. well, you see, a movie is an entire experience worth of content that you have not seen before, and you're there to experience the, the story and the characters and the cinematics and all this type of stuff. And a skin in a game is a slightly different version of the same gun that you've been using the whole time. They're not the same thing. I'd say that a skin in a game is more comparable to uh, like collecting things. Yeah. But at least if they're physical things, I guess they. I mean, honestly, that's not really one that I particularly get either. Um, like just physically collect. Like I never collected. I think the you last time things? I collected objects was when I was a child. No. Okay, that's what did I collect? Wrong. You used to collect like uh, you had that unobtainium bin okay that's so still a collection is that a collection those are mementos like that's not that's not just collecting retro games or collecting movie posters like i mean i like i could see i don't consider i don't consider the ticket stubs for every you know movie you saw together as a couple i don't consider that a collection that's mementos i'm talking like collecting collectibles like buying Super Nintendo games that you never played and are probably you never going to play or whatever. just for the sake of having a collection. That's something that I've never really understood. But I could see how something like in-game skins could tickle that same but how does, how is that bone. How is that the same as a movie? Well, no, it's nothing like a movie. Yeah. I'm not defending that thing. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, just saying, I, I'm just saying that I can understand how people could be into that um, but in a way where I don't understand how people are into that. I, I understand that people are into collectibles, and I think that's fine. I think a lot of the ways that games do that type of stuff is very predatory. I think there are also examples where it's completely fine. I have always defended League of Legends' version of free-to-play. The game is free. Yes. You can buy skins. Yes. Cool. They have to support their development somehow. Yes. 
you can I, I I don't I'm pretty sure you can't unlock skins through regular play. I'm completely fine with that. Yeah, who cares? It's just a visual thing. Then just don't have skins. You can play and buy no skins, and that means you can play for free and you can play ranked and you can do all that type of stuff. It makes sense to me. I don't like games. Uh, like let's let, let's think of like some of the worst examples. We have like a subscription model game. Yeah. That also has a cash shop. Mm -hmm. That includes loot boxes okay. that you have to buy expansions for. And it's just like, oh my goodness. So here's the problem. To me, buying a skin is akin to buying, like, like t t for me, an in-game item should be earned. If I didn't earn it, it has no value to me. So it's kind of like buying someone else's bowling trophy. Like, I didn't bowl a perfect 300 game, so why do I have this trophy? So what's that LOL, so World of Warcraft, there's a lot more games than WoW that fit that description. Sorry, keep going. Um, so, so yeah, I guess like, like I'm just trying to, I'm trying to differentiate. So, I'm not saying nothing digital has any value whatsoever. Oh, for sure. I'm, and and to, to talk about the example that you just gave, uh, the, the like skin should show that you like accomplish something or whatever. Yeah. I strongly agree with that. I under, I also understand that that doesn't work in models like the League of Legends model. And oh. League of Legends actually has that to a certain degree. If you like, if you win certain events, I don't remember how it works. I haven't sure. played in a long time. But if you win certain events, you can get like a specific skin. Or even for, just for, for like that. hours played. Sure. Or like for for not for not bailing out of a match a hundred times in a row. That'd be cool. Like rewarding non-toxic behavior. How about that? There's a, there's an innovative idea for that's you. That's the reason why I don't like it when they when they compound models because that was something that I had a huge problem with with Destiny. Yeah. Is Destiny is a is a game that you buy and it has expansions. I don't remember if you have to buy the expansions. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. And then there's this cash shop and some of the coolest stuff, some of the coolest skins in the game, which I do care about, but I care about it when I accomplish something that gives me that. I don't care about it whatsoever if I buy it from the store. I have zero value in it from there. But there's content that could have been in the game that would have been unlocking these things yeah. that you know is now not in the game. And there's constantly developer testimonials of like, yeah, we developed this thing that looks really cool and it was for this new raid tier. And the original idea was like, if you beat it in like under this amount of time or you like take this low amount of damage or you whatever, 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 Achievements. you get this thing. And then the business team was like, cash shop. And we had to take out these challenges, which is content. Yes. And like I, I personally really, really like kind of almost odd, uh, unintentionally challenging ways of playing games. Like something I used to love to do is like, oh, it's a shooter game, but it has like a crossbow. I'll restrict myself to only using the crossbow for fun. Or I'll try to play a game like non-lethal or whatever. And then there's weird like achievements or, or whatever you can get for doing those types of things. And I always thought that was really cool. And games have less of that stuff now because they're trying to sell the same stuff that you would have got if you just did those things. Sucks. Walker of Sky, oh, I get it, says, I bet Linus's take is something along the lines of if you get a physical item, you get to keep. Um, oh, I don't know what you're replying to, so maybe this is not relevant. But I also think one difference with the movie is that you are theoretically, assuming that you buy it on a platform where it can't be taken from you, like a blue, like a physical disc, you have it forever. When that game inevitably shuts down and the developer's like, yeah, forget it. Uh, or just allows it to go to seed like Valve has done with Team Fortress 2 in the current bot situation. You, it loses all of its value and you'll, you'll never get any use out of it again. You can't, you can't like hand it down to anyone, assuming that they even wanted it. Like to be clear, I also don't want to, I also don't want to promote just like, acquiring stuff for the sake of having stuff. I'm not saying that because it's physical stuff, it's better. No. That's that's not necessarily true at all. If no. anything, I'm trying to encourage my family to do far more reading on the Kindle and uh, you know, on a tablet or a phone and far less acquisition of physical books. Not that I don't personally appreciate the sound of the paper and the smell of a real book. I really do. But it, boy, do they ever take up a lot of space. <laughs> It's literally just packing your house with fire starters at a certain point. So it's like, okay. Um, this is just a really good comment on Twitch chat, which is unusual. So I'm going to read that. Uh, Snow for All says the problem with end game or late game items in single player games is you barely even use them, then it's over. That is so, that drives me so crazy. Uh, Bravely Default 2, that was one of the things that bothered me so much, is I spent the whole game getting to like this like S tier party. And then I was like, wait, hold on. that was the boss fight? 
because spoiler alert that particular game like changes you know, the plot twist the bad guy wasn't the bad guy I bet you never saw that one coming um so how do <laughs> i know subverted your expectations <laughs> yeah how do i how do i know if they're gonna you know rug pull me again or not i don't know <laughs> So I so I fought the boss and I was like, oh, I guess the game's over now. And I like there were literally items I didn't even equip because I was like, oh, I you know might not might get a chance to use these later. I, I somewhat agree with that. I somewhat don't. Some some games do have replayability. Um, some games super don't, and that's fine. I'm not necessarily saying that one is better than the other. There's some games that don't have replayability that I think are fantastic, and there's some games that do. Uh, but for an example, like say Pokemon embraced Nuzlocke. Do you know what a Nuzlocke is? No. So Pokemon games are easy. That's fine. Speak for yourself. I found them extremely difficult <laughs> when I was a child. Well, okay. Um, because the, the whole idea of a Pokemon game is you're learning counters, right? And as you play longer, you learn more counters. Mm -hmm. So they make the game harder, but ultimately you're going to figure out that water beats fire and whatever you're fine and you keep going. Yeah. And that if you choose anything other than Bulbasaur at the start, then you're a moron. Maybe this is why you found the game hard. Charizard, no, Char, or Charmander is just like, it's, it's like, it's such a hack. Why would you even, no, it's just, it's stupid. And Squirtle? <laughs> gross i am deeply offended <laughs> i know <laughs> but, <laughs> but okay the idea of a nuzlocke and i might screw this up a little bit uh, but the idea of a nuzlocke is you catch the first pokemon that you find in like a region or whatever <laughs> oh my god it's so fun to bother him about stuff like like you could tell actually upset actually upset yes i was a bulbasaur kid but it also just doesn't matter yeah, that's true um but yeah, you, you, I think you can catch the first Pokemon you encounter in a region, and then you can't catch another one in that region. Oh, really? So it so you really have limits. to catch it. And I believe if one of your Pokemon faints, you have to just like get rid of it. I don't remember if that's a thing. Really? Though. But it's like... So like hard mode. Yeah, and I could look it up, and maybe I said those things wrong, and I'm sorry, but there's, there's more rules to it, too, and everything, but it's a way like harder version of playing the game. If Pokemon like just embraced Nuzlocke as like a built-in difficult version of playing the game and then if you beat a nuzlocke you got you got some like form of accolade whether it was like yeah. a visual thing or whatever yeah. like that would be so cool that would be a huge value add but i'm sure games like that to take it away from nintendo and away from pokemon for a second games like that would rather just sell you the cosmetic that they could make for making that type of system which would be a way more interesting way more engaging and better way of being able to play the game if you wanted to play it on that level because not everyone's going to want to like not everyone goes and goes for the hardest difficulty in certain games there's certain game types that i like to play that i don't want to play it at super high difficulty there's other games where i do it it depends right and you shouldn't have to but if you do it it would be cool if you got something for it why mm -hmm. not and i feel like a lot of those types of things are being removed from games it's it's kind of the same thing where like um when us boomer boys were growing up, a lot of games had cheat codes that would make the game more fun. And now it's like, nope, buy the DLC or whatever else. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, come on. Speaking of, oh man, come on. Microsoft patents a system to play <laughs> discs on consoles with no disk drive. Luke, you want to do this one? It's so funny. Okay, yeah, I read that title. And my immediate knee jerk was like, what? That doesn't work. It's got to just be an external optical drive. How else is this going to happen? And then I start reading through it and I'm like, okay, okay, there's actually some cool things in here and I'll get to those in a moment. And I finally get to the, the bullet point that's like, the proposed system involves using an external disk drive to verify the Xbox game. It's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Okay, anyways, so let's actually go properly through it, because it is somewhat interesting. Uh, over the past decade, we've seen physical media become less and less pre prevalent as more consumers have switched to digital purchases or streaming services. That is true. I have some problems with that. Whatever. Let's move on. Uh, to the point that both Microsoft and Sony sell a version of their current consoles with no disk drive, also known as, in this specific case, the Xbox Series S. Uh, if you decided to pick up an Xbox Series S, you'll find you have no way to play your Xbox One back catalog if you have them on digital or uh, uh, physical versions. Um, but in a recently discovered patent from 2020, it's not even new, uh, Microsoft proposes a system allowing players to receive digital versions of the games that they bought on disc. So that's what's going on. You're like verifying 
that your you license, have it, I guess. Effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's unknown. Uh, I don't know if this goes into it in the notes, but it, it's unknown if you like, if the physical version will f- keep working fully independently. Right. Like because I, because if it did, you could sell that. Like, would it transfer the license to, to the digital version can like, you transfer it back <laughs> and then like how does it stop the physical version from working are you sure it's 2022 because it sounds like 1984 it's weird it's just like the amount like do we own anything anymore i'm not i'm not actually sure i mean that's that's my continued argument for buying stuff like switch games physically and i know like a lot of people don't want to do it and that's fine do whatever you want well if there's anyone who's <laughs> you on it it's going to be nintendo yeah Honestly, though, like seriously, that's yeah. part of my argument. <laughs> They're really bad with like yeah. anything online. The fact that there's still no way I actually, you know what? I don't even care because at the end of the day, like I was already really upfront with them about it. Um, Nintendo reached out about a sponsorship engagement with us. And my response to them was, I think, a classic, a classic Linus moment um, where basically I said, look, <laughs> I can just I'm just going to read it to you because whatever, it's my email. I can read it if I want. Uh, I should start by saying I'm a lifelong Nintendo user. Breath of the Wild is probably my all-time favorite game, and my Switch OLED is currently the only modern console in my house. I'm not a fan of anything. I do love the product and Nintendo's unique approach to gaming that has made their content fresh and innovative for my whole life. The Wii is the only consumer electronics device I've ever camped overnight to buy on release day. These are all, these are all things that are true. However, this is bolded underlined and italicized however (laughs) yeah it is (laughs) when it comes to engaging as a business i have some serious problems with some of nintendo's anti-consumer policies and practices depending on the messaging i could still be open to working together but you guys should understand that it won't change how i feel about some of nintendo's past and present behavior and that it won't change how i talk about it to our audience one easy example is how blatantly nintendo bullies customers into paying for nintendo online to back up save files when it could just as easily be done to an sd card requiring no cloud sync and no monthly fee the ideal outcome of these conversations i have with you is that it reaches the ears of nintendo's executives who see the light and realize that part of meeting the competition i'm assuming this is about getting out ahead of wide availability of the steam deck head-on is shifting to a more consumer-centric approach marketing may not be enough The more likely outcome is none of this changes and you guys may be stuck in an awkward position where one minute I'm partnered with Nintendo sharing co-developed messaging and the next minute you're explaining to some executive that I'm expressing frustration bordering on anger that Super Mario Party for Switch never got patched to make the board game mode playable. No, I don't consider it playable if you can't skip the tutorial crap. CC and Colton from my business team just want to make sure you've got full transparency about how we work here. Our audience values our authenticity, which is why you're knocking on our door. You've just got to know up front, whoop, my phone went to sleep, that we won't compromise that authenticity for any brand or any deal. Um, I forget how we started this conversation. But, oh, we were talking about how I, oh, I'm an advocate for buying physical Switch games. Right. And I was saying, they don't even allow you to back up your save files. The fact that this is a portable device that you must pay an online fee to retain save data for, like, should be illegal, in my opinion. It's crazy. It's insane mm-hmm. that as consumers, we accept this. Yep. So. And you can resell your physical games. We'll see. We'll see if they decide to engage with us. I think it might show a, a, a step towards a greater degree of maturity. Um, but what I, like I said in the email, what I suspect is that they will see this bulk and oh, they haven't responded. go work with someone else. Oh, I don't. I don't know if they've responded. I think. How I long should, ago did you send that? I don't remember. I, just, I shifted it over to Colton, and then I haven't thought about it since. Got it. Um, it's not it's not my problem right it's just it's one of those things where i understand the kind of traditional company that nintendo is and there's a there's a there's there's types of companies right like you you get a feel for these things after a certain amount of time you know how they work and there's types of companies where they actually don't understand that a sponsorship one time doesn't mean that they like own you yeah (laughs) You, you know like yeah that you it doesn't mean that you're just gonna you know fillet them about everything like it's it doesn't not the best time to go for a drink of water yeah it, it doesn't work that, yeah the memes the memes i couldn't help noticing that's eggplant colored ah. um, <laughs> and and i just i i get the vibe that there's a certain company culture at 
Nintendo uh, where there's certain aspects, there's certain parts of the company. And you got to understand, every company is made up of many people, dozens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands varying of people. Varying opinions, varying stances. They're all individuals, right? But there's a certain kind of like you can you can smell an NVIDIA employee from a mile away. They just are they have a they have a type. Right. And a lot of that comes from the top down. And I'd, I I mean, I'd like to think we have a company culture here. I'd like to think it's a pretty positive one. Uh, but, you know, certain companies, you get the vibe that if they sponsor you, they're going to have this sort of misunderstanding and it's going to create a bunch of drama and a bunch of strife and a bunch of problems in my life that I just don't feel like having. And if they're not down for the way that we work, then I just want to make sure it's real clear up front that, you know, you're not going to like it. Then, <laughs> So you might, might as well just take your money elsewhere. Go work with somebody else. Um, all right. Yeah. What are we talking about? Uh, either more... Is there anything else to like YouTube is highlighting the most replayed parts of videos? I can't say I care too much about this one, but you chose it as a main topic. So, uh, I mean, how many topics were in the doc this week? Six. We got to call out four. Okay, that's true. That is sort of the the routine. <laughs> I usually get stuck with the last two. That's so, true. So <laughs> That's one of the alpha moves that I pull just to with this guy it's great it's he, he leaves me with nothing and then one of the topics that i pick out out of nothing he's like why did you pick that one i'm uh, like what else is there bro <laughs> come on anyways um i thought there was maybe some interesting takes i i can i have concerns about how this will affect watch time uh i think this could hurt watch time for sure i i kind of would bet that it will hurt watch time um, and I just find it very funny um, that they are just continuing to steal features from porn sites. <laughs> Those are the two things that I wanted to bring up. Okay, well, I guess that's pretty good then. We could also <laughs> um, we could also talk about the RTX 40 rumor mill spills. Rumors have emerged this week that NVIDIA's mm. upcoming at a Lovelace architecture may be coming earlier than expected. Maybe early Q3. That could be as early as mid-July. Um Anthony's note says pronounced copite seven Kimmy. Oh, that's the user uh, who tweeted. We could see it in Q3. Leaked specs are that the AD102300 could have 16,000 FP32 CUDA cores, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, 450 watt TDP, and double the RTX 3090's performance. That is whew, pretty incredible. It looks like it is going to be a pretty substantial update based on the latest rumors when it had been rumored that it was going to be more of a refresh. And at the rate that RTX 40 is apparently being pulled in and the rate that ARC is being pushed out, we could see at a Lovelace before we see ARC, especially in the West. Crazy. Change of plans may or may not have been accelerated by some combination of the crypto crash, RDNA 3, and ARC. Or the original rumors were just flat out wrong, which is also a possibility. There was one more thing. Uh, oh, yeah. AMD says their uh, Radeon cards are better bang for the buck. Uh, they're mostly right. Uh, oh, I should disclose that we have worked with AMD in a sponsored capacity around Radeon recently. That video hasn't come out yet, but it's um, it's about sort of getting the most out of your Radeon card. So that's there. Just wanted to make sure that's clear. But this is just editorial coverage of uh, AMD's marketing head, Frank Azor, posting an interesting chart on Tuesday comparing the performance, power usage, and price of AMD's GPU lineup compared to the competition. As a longtime gamer, I'm grateful for the renewed blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it actually, like, looks kind of not stupid. Um, yeah. I mean, 3090, it, I love that they didn't even include 3090 Ti because it's just like sort of irrelevant. Uh, and now they're not saying they have the performance crown. The 3090 is a higher performing card than the 6950 XT, but like at $600 more. Um, wait, are they saying better FPS? Really? Mm, what games are you guys testing? Uh... Actually, okay, I actually didn't watch our <clears throat> 6950 XT review. I was on vacation. So apparently it's more faster than the 6900 XT than I thought. So I was not I was not expecting that result. Okay, cool. 
So that's neat. You guys can learn more about that. Hot Hardware took it upon themselves to verify the claims, and as it turns out, it's pretty much true. AMD did not disclose their testing suite, but Hot Hardware found through their testing that in their testing suite, so long as the games weren't too ray tracing heavy, AMD tended to win in both price to performance and price per watt. It should be noted that AMD may not be winning if you go by MSRP alone, because NVIDIA cards are still suffering from inflated prices due to demand, although that may change now that AMD is like, hey, by the way, um, us, we're here. I really wish they had a better encoder. I am, I'm excited to see what they come out with with RDNA 3, because as a content creator, it's a big deal for me. I yeah. can't just have a crap tier GPU video encoder. And I mean, it's it's going to impact things because like, with how much streaming is going on these days, um, that that's important. That yes matters. and no. Like it's still a minority, but it's still a feature yeah, people those, care about just in case. And genuinely, a lot of streamers are putting their specs below mm -hmm. their streams. Mm -hmm. And if people are like, "Oh, I should buy a computer," or whatever. I mean, apparently, you can form a whole ass PC building company based around just sponsoring selling... streamers. What were they called again? I literally the don't one that remember. went under. I don't uh, know. Artisan. Artisan. Yeah. Yeah. Like. I'd never even heard of them. They had what, like 40 employees or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like they're they're moving PCs and they're moving PCs based off what they have. So it matters. All right. We got a couple more uh, merch messages to go through here, guys. From Jonathan, how do you keep your beards looking so awesome? I don't think mine looks awesome. I think um, it looks better than mine. Well, Yvonne takes care of herself really well. I don't really have to do anything. It's a joke. It's... I don't even get it. You don't know what a oh, beard is? I think that makes sense. I don't, but I think I just kind of put it together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't really do anything either. I just have to condition it because otherwise Yvonne gets mad at me because it's too scratchy. It's too pokey. Yeah. yeah. And then, oh, I, I do, I like, I shave it. So I, I go to I, number four, I think. So I just go like this, number four. And then I take my, my like um, electric shaver, you know, with the three circles thing uh, that I use to like clean up up here. And then I, it has like a flip out blade thing. And I just go like that along the lip, the bottom of the lip. And then I also use it to kind of clean up the bottom at the at the neckline. And then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's just taking its its sweet time becoming thicker. It's been thin for a long time. It is getting thicker over time. As Mine was super thin until I reached like past 30. Yeah. So, I don't know. And then I, I always thought I couldn't grow a beard. And then I was like lazy about it at the beginning of the lockdowns. And I was like, Oh, I can oh wait! Grow yeah. facial hair now. Yeah. Well, that's and like looking at what my dad is capable of doing when he lets his grow out, I'll be fine. It's just not quite it's there yet. Gonna get there. It's <laughs> yeah. gonna take some time. Yeah, it's gonna take some time. Uh, this question is from Christopher Robin. I don't know if this was an accidental Linus curation, uh, but they asked. Uh, well, the, here's a donation to help you guys out, saving up gift cards for the backpack and screwdriver. Awesome. Okay. Uh, they missed the long sleeve constellation shirt because of shipping costs. Any way I could pay extra to get shipped with the backpack? No, because we're producing them now, and that's all we're producing. So we just don't really like we can't we can't spin up the silk screen shop to do like one shirt. It's just not really feasible. Um, sorry. From Joe, do you have a moment to talk about our Dark Lord and Savior Cthulhu? Uh, Cthulhu's not a sponsor yet. So sure. If he could figure that out, then yeah. Um, I mean, usually when people ask you that question, they then proceed to talk to you about it. So I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm going to hear like a, a deep, uh, raspy voice in my head. Yeah. yeah I'll yeah. pull up Joe on uh, Discord. <laughs> <laughs> From Oliver, what games do you play with your children, uh, Linus? Oh, um,. Man, uh, there's a really fun one called Takeling's House Party that my kids love to play. It's a VR game where there's you're a homeowner in VR and you have to like get the Takelings who are trying to steal your stuff or like sabotage your kitchen or whatever. Uh, and all the Takelings play with controllers on the couch around. So it's a really fun party game. It's actually really cool. Um, what else? Uh, they they really like playing Minecraft Dungeons. It's just like a super basic dungeon crawler it's diablo but like minecraft themed it's um, diablo but surprisingly even more basic than diablo yeah uh that's one well it's a little it's deep it's deeper than diablo one that's for sure well yeah uh but that's I mean, also a game a from like 20 time. Ooh, yeah 25 years ago Woo. anyway 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, Minecraft Dungeons. Um, you know, uh, my son likes to play Towerfall uh, with me and Luke, so we've done that a fair bit. He's actually like pretty good. Like he'll he'll win rounds sometimes, like hmm. increasingly sometimes. Yeah, it's amazing how quick they learn. Hey, at the start it was like no, and then it became like maybe once or twice a session, and now it's becoming like he's actually like he can actually win full matches. Yeah, mm. pretty competitive. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> From David, I've heard you guys talk a lot about ideas that never happened because it wouldn't perform well. Do you guys have a favorite video that got away or something you really wanted to do but just couldn't justify? Well, I can open up the doc. The video tracker doc is a black hole. Of... I know there's been a bunch, but I honestly don't. Really I mean, remember. we still haven't done the Murphy bed PC. That's a matter of time. Um, oh, man. We still haven't done a double blind to see if people can hear the difference between headphone amps and DAX. Uh, man, there's so many, so many videos in here. I'd have to really rack the memory because it's not something I've really considered. PC building time. speed run any percent world record. <laughs> it's one that we've got in here. Call me Chris Collab. That we shot already. I can delete that. Man, there's so many things. I've never... Like, and I think you know this. I've never liked the whole speed building thing. Well, you had to you had to do it at like an event, a sponsored event or something once. And wasn't but it like kind of a fiasco? We trolled them, remember? Oh yeah, didn't we wear like horse head masks or something? I wanted to troll them. It was it was you weren't there. It was just me going. Oh, I thought did I do a horse mask one at some point? It I, doesn't matter. Okay, so it was it was just me going. I talked to you about how like I should do it, right? Like it was a good idea for the company at that time. Yeah. But it's a stupid thing so like yeah. i wanted to spice it up and you were like why don't you do this and you told me to wear a horse head mask oh that's right and they like were a little apprehensive about it so i just stopped talking about it just smuggled it on stage and stashed it under the table and then when they told us to start i pulled it out from under the table and put it on and just did it that way anyways and that stream went from like didn't really matter to top of twitch because of that so like wild success and totally worked out oh, but it man. only did because of the horse head mask, no one cared about speed building a computer. Because yeah. why? Like I, I don't know. I've never. What you should I've actually do is go carefully and yeah, take care of your things. Like like what we've been trying to teach people forever yeah. is to do it properly, not to do it necessarily. To do fast. as we say, not as we do. Yeah. <laughs> and then like if you're if you're like factory building computers, that's a different thing. Yes. But like. But then you'll have a team of people. You'll be doing it in an assembly line. Yeah, it's different. Just like we finished assembling this WAN show. We will see you again next week. <laughs> hey. Same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye. The show is brought to you by Origin PC. 